Up next, we have Thomas Knox, the co-founder and CEO of Vitvio, an AI-driven computer vision platform designed to enhance the safety and efficacy of hospital operating theaters. Thomas, thanks for being here and take it away. Thank you so much. Hi, guys. It's a pleasure to meet everybody. Uh, and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about some of the challenges that hospitals are facing today and how we can uh, address that with visual tech. So I'm going to start it off with actually with a bit of a fun fact. Did you know that statistically speaking, every single person in this room will have at least five surgeries in their lifetime? The surgical teams that are supporting this are under absolutely immense pressure. This pressure is substantially increased by aging population, ever-growing wait lists, and lack of medical staff. All of which, as we might know, are currently predicted to get even more challenging in the next few years. While these teams care deeply and are doing the very best they can possibly to keep up, their tools, systems, and processes are extremely complex and highly manual. For example, if you look at this process map for a single surgery flow, there's at least 12 different roles involved with 20 different touch points across 43 different steps. And each one of those steps actually can spin off into their own sub-processes with its own challenges. And as you can imagine, that makes the complexity even, like, even bigger. And this doesn't even include the surgical procedure itself. This results in about $50 billion of waste in the U.S. alone. Of course, hospitals and health tech companies have been trying to solve this problem for, for many years. But uh, so far, all of them have one thing in common. Almost every single one of the tools developed so far relies on staff's manual input. For example, manual time tracking, where a member of staff will actually need to divert their attention away from the patient just to log key information into the record system, which, to be honest, they often forget about until after the surgery is done, which then causes those, uh, those estimates to become quite inaccurate. It'll probably send some of the data scientists out there into a bit of a frenzy. Or barcode scanning. Every single item that enters the theater needs to be scanned and keep a log of what's actually being brought into the theater. This takes quite a bit of time and does not actually give a real view of what's actually being used within the package, rather just that it has been opened inside the OR. Or even word of mouth, where literally that means calling on the phone or walking down to the OR to ask how long is left in the surgery. As I mentioned, or the, the staff are pretty overstretched. Well, thanks to vision-based technologies, we're finally able to start address some of the root causes of these hospital problems. So how do we do that at Bitfield? From the get-go, we aim to swap out these manually collected imprecise data with ground truth autonomously captured data. We use cameras and sensors to track all the people, equipment, fixtures, fittings, interactions, and processes within an OR. At the intersection of those, you can then try to find actionable insights to actually prevent cancellations, reduce waste, and even potentially allow surgical teams to schedule more surgeries in a day. For example, on the left-hand side here, you can actually see our human pose estimation model running over a live surgery. Don't worry, you're not going to see any blood for the squeamish up there. It's just the pre-marking stage of the surgery. Um, but using human pose estimation and 3D tracking, we, actually, we can actually estimate um, each joint down to centimeter accuracy within space and then use that context to understand the actions being taken within an OR. With this context, we can do things like automatically understand the stage of the surgery. Has a patient arrived? Have they gone under anesthetic? Has a first incision occurred? This kind of information is critical to the staff around the hospital to understand when to paralyze activities, such as uh, alerting the nursing staff to tell them when they need to start prepping the next patient, or notifying to the cleaning crew that they need to come down to OR number three in 10 minutes, all of which we detect, log, and trigger autonomously. Or to give another example here, we can look closely at tool wastage. When a surgeon needs a tool, they often, get, they often add it to what's called the surgical tray or surgeon's preference card. It's a very additive process with no real easy way to know uh, what's actually being used on the tray once it's been added. Uh, and every time a surgical tray is opened within an OR, everything on it either needs to be disposed of or sent for re-sterilization, just to try to reduce the, the risk of cross-contamination. Now, these tools are very expensive with an expensive sterilization process and a really pretty heavy carbon fo footprint. We try to look deeply into these to then provide insights into what we may or may not need on those trays going forward, trying to reduce the total wastage uh, of each procedure. And that is before we even get into anything around the learning and insights opportunities we can provide to the staff and OR around processes and protocols. Now, looking at the OR itself is just the beginning. Technologies like this can start to branch out into other parts of the hospital and integrate deeper into the processes around the hospital, not only to drive efficiency, but also to provide deeper, more le uh, meaningful learning experiences and try to reduce the hospital's carbon footprint. 
Your not so fun fact for the day is that uh, did you know the aviation industry produ- or the hospital industry produces twice the carbon emissions of the entire aviation industry? Ultimately, our goal is to alleviate the pressure on the healthcare system and the staff in the ORs by leveraging vision systems and automation, both in and out of the operating theater, to complement these difficult processes. By doing this, we're trying to allow the staff to focus on what's most important, the patients. Thank you so much for your time. If you like what we're working on, reach out. We're always looking for new hospitals to work with or amazing talent to join our team. I'd really love to speak with you. Thanks, guys.